the last class we concluded our lecture on wideband amplifier. It was emphasized that the time constants must be made very small somehow by impedance mismatch or by negative feedback or by selecting resistors as low as possible with gain being maintained at reasonable value. Now, the resistors are physical resistors, not simulated resistors like current sources. So, you would find that one characteristic feature of all wideband amplifiers as well as high speed comparators etcetera, that is it is never using these current sources, particularly current sources which are made out of P and P transistors. This I had mentioned earlier. In place of it, you will actually use physical resistors. Of course, in low frequency applications, we could afford to use these current sources and current sinks of course, are made out of NPN transistors which are very good. It is the current sources which are troublesome things in low frequency uh, uh, that is applications you use current sources, but in high frequency applications you do not use current sources at all in the circuit. That is how you have seen the wideband IC that we have discussed is devoid of any current source. It might be using current sink, but it is devoid of any current source, but not so is the case with low frequency applications like voltage regulator IC, operational amplifier IC etcetera. The final building block that we are going to discuss today in making up such integrated circuits is the voltage source and voltage reference. Now, this was the only thing left out and of course, the output stage will be uh, discussed as part of this uh, voltage source and voltage reference. So, what are these voltage sources and voltage references? Let us see. We have been again accustomed to using in our electrical engineering terms like sources and references in a synonymous manner. Similarly, we have been accustomed to using sources and sinks okay, in a synonymous manner, but not so with integrated circuit. We will make a clear cut distinction between sources which are only obtainable using PNP transistors, sinks which are obtainable using NPN transistors. Similarly, we are going to make a distinction here between sources and references. What is this source, voltage source? Let us see. Voltage source is something that you derive out of the power supply. Let us say we have the power supply for the a operational amplifier IC or comparator IC etcetera or for that matter any IC and we would like uh, to derive another reference, another uh, source rather right, which is having its magnitude of voltage almost independent of the supply voltage. That is supply independent source that is what we mean by voltage sources that we are going to talk about. It is supply independent, okay. but it may be temperature dependent that we are not bothered. Okay. It may be temperature dependent to a certain extent, but it is essentially supply independent and it should be capable of delivering as much current as I demand from it. So, we should be uh, happily able to load the particular source without the source voltage changing much. That means, its output impedance should be near 0. Okay. So, its output impedance should be as low as possible and it should be capable of delivering whatever current we demand from it. This is the characteristic of a voltage source. On the other hand, voltage reference is more sacred than this voltage source. 
A voltage reference by its terminology itself means something that we would like to use as reference and compare. This voltage reference has a variety of applications in integrated circuits and people have spent large number of years in coming up with ideas suitable for voltage references both in bipolar technology as well as MOS technology and also by MOS technology, a suitable voltage reference. Obviously, the voltage reference is a voltage which is independent of supply voltage as well as temperature. That means, its temperature coefficient is very near 0 or it is few parts per million per degree centigrade rise in temperature. So, the voltage reference is very important in almost all control applications, whether you are controlling a DC voltage or whether you are controlling an AC voltage, whether you are controlling speed, whether you are controlling uh, let us say uh, position, whatever be the thing, a reference is needed. During old days of course, voltage reference was very commonly used as a reference. Okay. Present day application of controls, we are tending towards changing this voltage reference to frequency reference, no current reference, frequency reference. We will see that later. But in uh, large number of converts, when you want to convert an analog information into digital information, okay, even in such conversions, voltage reference plays a vital role. Okay. So, voltage reference need not have low output impedance. This is important, need not have low output impedance subsequently it should not be loaded. It is not capable of delivering current to you. Right? So, voltage reference is something that retains its zero temperature coefficient property only when it is not loaded. Okay? So, this is the important characteristic of voltage reference. Because it has such highway responsibility, we do not want to put additional responsibility of low output impedance, okay, etcetera, etcetera. Therefore, we make a clear cut distinction here between source and reference. Why do we need voltage sources? Obviously, an important application where we need voltage source within an IC is when we want to avoid unnecessary feedback from output stages. Okay. How come that uh, feedback occurs if you use normal power supply? If a power supply is common to all the stages that are involved in a system, power supply is a common thing okay, for the output stage which is dealing with high power okay, as well as pre-amplifier stage you are landing yourself in very serious problem. Particularly, if the voltage reference or voltage source in this case is going to have low output impedance but finite, then obviously when large current is being drawn from it, the terminal voltage is going to change. That means, the terminal voltage changes according to signal. Okay? Subsequently, since the same terminal is connected to all power supply points of the system, the feedback results through the power supply. So, this results in obviously what? High frequency oscillation. At some frequency now, it can cause what? Oscillations because the so called feedback turns itself into positive feedback and therefore, the whole system starts oscillating. Okay. The amplifier starts oscillating not because the amplifier has been designed badly, but because you are using same power supply for all amplifiers. Okay. This is some point which a designer should 
always bother about, okay, particularly in IC designer where the IF amplifier as well as audio amplifier and power amplifier will be the responsibility of the IC designer. Okay. So, if you are making a single chip IC for the entire system, okay, you must necessarily isolate the power supply for the pre-amplifier stage. It is the pre-amplifier stage okay, which has to have the power supply isolated from the final output stage. How do we do it? Obviously, you can now in the case of an integrated circuit, you can put a separate voltage source okay, derived from the main power supply to supply to the preamplifier and maybe the first amplifier etcetera. Right. This is the technique adopted in almost all ICs which are single chip ICs okay, supplying power to preamplifier as well as power amplifier. Okay. So, that kind of voltage source how do you derive? We have basically a single Zener diode. What is it? Emitter base junction. It is the emitter base junction whose reverse breakdown voltage is low, right? That is about uh, 6 to 7 volts, okay? And it is this Zener which is available as a Zener diode. So, you can use a Zener diode which is just a single Zener diode please remember in a particular technology, bipolar technology. This is about let us say 7 volt Zener. This is available to you. This can be a voltage source. That means, we have to obviously bias this. and we get a voltage source which is going to be used perhaps for the preamplifier stage or something. But then you are restricted to operate exactly at 7 volts supply. Do you do not have any flexibility. So, do we have a means of obtaining other voltage sources? Obviously, if it is Zener diode, you do not have any other Zener diode except this one Zener diode. But we can use a diode in the forward bias mode and a string of the diodes as the Zener. Please remember that all these Zener diodes, in fact any Zener diode or voltage source that we are going to discuss will operate above a certain current okay, called knee current in this case, right? maintaining the voltage across it constant, relatively constant, almost independent of the current flowing through this okay? and it has a maximum current that is the based on the power dissipation. That, that is something that you should know. It has a minimum current of operation, the maximum current of operation within which you will see to it that it operates. So, obviously, if I connect it like this, it is to a certain extent still supply dependent. What will be the current in this? Vcc minus 7 divided by R s. So, as V c c say varies, okay, this current is going to vary and it is going to result in small variation in Zener voltage itself. Okay. So, it is not all that supply independent. Okay. It is going to be dependent upon supply to a certain extent here, right. But we can say that for all practical purposes, it is going to be around 
7 volts. And obviously, I can draw current from this. The moment I start drawing current from this to a load, it will become load dependent also. In order to reduce this, because I do not want to load it, I can freely use now okay, a current amplifier. So, even though large current variation occurs here, the current variation is going to be beta times reduced. So, this kind of arrangement I can definitely have in order to make this voltage source become okay, a better source, so that its output impedance is going to be low now. Right? This is a common collector configuration strictly speaking. Right? So, the output impedance of this was originally R z itself, R small z that is zener impedance. Now, in this case it is R e plus R small z divided by beta plus 1. Okay. So, you can reduce the output impedance. The particularly in this case, you will see that in order to change the zener voltage, I am using n number of diodes, but its output impedance is going to be also increased by the same number n. That means, if each diode impedance is small r e, this total impedance is going to be n times r e. So, in order to again cause the output impedance to become low, we will put this buffer stage here, so that the loading of this okay, is not going to affect too much the current variation in this. So, continuing with our discussion about voltage sources, let us see how using a single zener diode that is available, which is having a breakdown voltage of about 6 to 7 volts, we are able to obtain a voltage source with low output impedance delivering capable of delivering current of any magnitude we want. Depending upon uh, the magnitude of current, we can put a single transistor or Darlington pair of transistors okay, to take care of the uh, current that it can supply. The output impedance is going to be to that extent getting reduced based on how many transistors we are going to use here. This is an alternative to obtain uh, zener, which is different from what is available as zener diode. It is a string of diodes connected in series. So, we have n times V diode coming into picture and therefore, n times R e is the output impedance of this without the buffer stage. If you introduce the buffer stage, it will be n R e divided by beta plus 1 reduced. So, this also can act as a voltage source whenever required. Now, you might say I would like to have a voltage source whose source voltage is going to be neither an integral multiple of V gamma nor is it equal to the 6, 7 volts that is available as a zener. I want to fix it as a voltage which I want. Okay. How do you do it? So, that means we can simulate a zener. How do you simulate a zener? Let us take this circuit. Consider this circuit. This is let us say R 1, this is R 2. So, this is nothing but V diode, V gamma. So, the current in this is therefore, V gamma or V diode divided by R 1. So, same current is likely to flow through this if you say beta is very high for the transistor and they have developed a potential which is V d by R 1 into R 2, this drop. So, the voltage V naught is going to be nothing but V diode okay, plus 
this drop of V D into R2 by R1. So, V diode plus V diode into R2. Or it is V D into 1 plus R2 over R1. So, by adjusting the ratio R2 over R1 any value you like, you can obtain a zina of any voltage you want. This is a powerful technique, particularly in what is called class A B biasing of a particular stage. Class A biasing requires in an output stage two diode drop, if it is a push pull configuration, right? Two diode drops. Whereas class A B biasing requires it should be less than two diode drop. So, how do you do it? So, if you want something less than two diode drop, you can make R2 over R1 less than 1 and therefore, it is just on the verge of conducting the output stage. So, in such output stages, okay, where we want class AB biasing, this zener is very commonly used, wherein R2 by R1 is made less than 1. So, Pardon? In all the zener, this is a, an exact rep replacement of the zener diode. So, how do you really uh, bias the zener? You have to again pump in current. Okay. That means, this also will need R s to supply voltage etcetera, etcetera. So, this is a routine thing. This actually is nothing but the replacement for only the zener. It also operates above a certain minimum current, below a certain maximum current. Okay. So, please remember that there is a minimum current of this V diode into 1 plus R 2 over R 1 divided by R 2 plus R 1. That is V diode by R 1 required for it to start functioning. Right? The knee current is greater than V d by R 1, so that there is some current flowing in this transistor. Okay. So, V d by R 1 is the current needed here and since this transistor also has to conduct, there is some extra current needed. So, it, it can only function as a zener above a certain knee current. Okay. And whatever be this current, okay, ex, apart from V d by R 1, rest of the current has to be pumped into this. That means, it can also tolerate a maximum of certain amount of current which is permitted through the transistor. So, all the characteristics of Zener it had. What is the output impedance? The output impedance of this roughly when you apply a voltage V naught, okay, the current is going to be V D divided by R 2 plus R 1 parallel H I E. Right? So, the current that is taken is going to be we, uh, so, in order to evaluate the output impedance, this is the step, we, we will say V naught divided by R 2 plus R 1 parallel H i e is the current that is injected into this, right. Out of which R 1 okay, divided by R 1 plus H i e is pumped into the base. this is pumped into the base. This times HFE is the current that is taken from here. Okay. So, effective current therefore, is going to be what? This current plus whatever we said V naught divided by R 2 plus R 1 parallel H. Have you understood this? This is the total current that is going to be drawn from a voltage which is equal to V naught. So, the impedance, output impedance is going to be V naught divided by this. So, V naught divided by this total current is nothing but what? The output impedance that is going to be equal to 1 divided by 1 by R 2 plus R 1 parallel H i e plus H f e 
into R1 by R1 plus Hi divided by R2. That is the, that means actually speaking if HFE of the transistor is very large, the output impedance is going to be very small, okay. It's going to be very small because this, this is going to, okay, vanish. This is going to dominate. So it is essentially R2 plus R1 parallel HIE divided by HFE into R1 by R1 plus HIE. Strictly speaking, it is going to be coming towards what? RE, right? The, if you look at the expression, it is coming towards R small e, which is nothing but the common base, okay, input impedance. So basically, this is a structure with low output impedance suitable for use as a voltage source. So instead of using just this, if I remove this, and use a Zener diode along with this, the usual Zener, what happens? This merely changes from V diode to Vz plus V diode. So that means actually you can even get So these are the circuit techniques of obtaining what you cannot normally obtain from the technology. So the Zener diode of the desired value can be very easily obtained by these various schemes that are available to you. Where do you use these voltage sources? These voltage sources are primarily used for isolating the input stage from the output stage so that there is no feedback. feedback causing a serious problem about oscillations in any system. Okay. This is one that is meant that means if you are designing a VLSI circuit wherein you have a large number of uh, subsystems connected together, you will repeatedly use this okay, voltage source to be derived from the main source okay, for each one of those input stages. Next. Also when we are connecting one stage to the other stage, that is where coupling, when you are coupling, the DC levels have to be different in order to obtain the required swing. Because as you keep on amplifying, the swing at the output will keep on reducing, okay, because of the requirement of the reverse bias for the transistor. Unless you keep shifting it down to a lower value. That means this level shifting becomes automatically a necessity in the case of coupling. Consider this. This is NPN transistor and this NPN transistor is to be coupled to another NPN transistor directly. Will be coupled to another NPN. If you are sticking to only NPN transistors, then there is this problem. If you are saying that you are going to couple NPN with PNP, there is no such problem, okay? Therefore, in a stage where we are restricted to use good NPN transistors only for wideband structures, etc., we might have to rec take recourse to what is called level shifting. Why do you need level shifting? Is this clear? Because this is a common supply. There is need for a certain reverse bias voltage for a certain swing here, okay. There is need for higher reverse bias voltage here, okay, for a higher swing for the next stage. But as you progress slowly, okay, you are reaching the supply voltage gradually. And therefore, unless you do the level shifting, bring it down further, you cannot actually get larger swing for the later swing stages. So, in order to do this, we take recourse to 
level shifting by using what? A Zeno diode. This Zeno diode could be any one of these configurations that we have already discussed. That means actually you had to bias this by means of a current source so that the level shifted is equal to the Zener voltage. So, the application of this in any IC design is in the case of level shifting as well as in isolated power supplies for the various subsystems. Now, this is the characteristic of the voltage source. What about voltage references? Okay. So, let us now discuss about voltage references. As I told you, the distinction between voltage source and voltage reference is only this. In the case of a voltage reference, it is supposed to have an output voltage independent of supply voltage and temperature. Whereas, in the case of a source, we are not bothered about its temperature dependence, but we are bothered about its ability to supply large currents okay, without changing its terminal voltage. Of course, it should be independent of the main supply voltage. Okay. So, how do we derive a voltage which is independent of temperature? Now, this aspect we will now discuss. We know that the Zeno diode here whose breakdown voltage is about 7 volts has what kind of temperature coefficient? Did I discuss this? In the beginning, right, I had discussed this matter about Zener, okay, of 7 volts breakdown. It is having a positive temperature coefficient of about 2 millivolts per degree centigrade rise in temperature. So, the Zener is about 2 millivolts per degree centigrade. Clear? Now, we have another device, okay, Zener, whose temperature coefficient is negative. What is it? No, in bipolar itself. The diode, forward biased. So, the diode, delta V diode divided by delta T is equal to how much? What is this? Minus 2, okay, to 2.5 millivolts, okay, per degree centigrade rise in temperature. These are standard values. This, these values you must always remember because irrespective of the manufacturer, these values remain the same. So, the forward bias diode has its forward vo voltage with a negative temperature coefficient, whereas the actual Zener diode has a positive temperature coefficient. It is understandable, therefore, that if we put this together, we can get a scheme where zero temperature coefficient is possible. Okay? So, this is one of the techniques of obtaining a voltage reference, and one such technique is given here. Let us consider this itself. Okay. Here, this has positive temperature coefficient of about 2 millivolts per degree centigrade. The output voltage here, if you put a transistor, okay, is going to be V z minus V gamma. So, what will be the temperature coefficient of this voltage, output voltage now? Minus uh, this is 2 millivolts okay, okay, and this has negative temperature coefficient. So, the effective temperature coefficient is going to be 4.5 millivolts okay, positive because it the neg this V z minus V gamma. So, the effective temperature coefficient of this is minus uh, plus 4.5 millivolts per degree centigrade rise in temperature. Okay. So, now I want another source which is having negative temperature coefficient that is nothing but a diode. 
So, I have one source with positive temperature coefficient, another source with negative temperature coefficient. So, what do I do? I add these voltages suitably, I take a resistive divider, I put alpha r here and 1 minus alpha r here. So, the output voltage, the output voltage is going to be how much? Alpha times V z minus V gamma plus 1 minus alpha times V gamma or V diode. Okay? So, what, what do you get? V gamma or V diode. We can now make delta V naught by delta T become equal to 0, because we are adding a voltage with positive temperature coefficient with one parameter controllable that is alpha, okay, such that we will add these voltages such that delta V naught by delta T is equal to 0. So, that can be done, you differentiate this, so you will get alpha times delta V z by delta T minus alpha times delta V diode by delta T plus 1 minus alpha alpha times delta V diode by delta T equal to 0. You put this and obtain the value of alpha. Okay? I am going to leave this exercise to you. You will get a value of alpha for this. If you substitute the temperature coefficients as 2 millivolts per degree centigrade and minus 2.5 millivolts per degree centigrade, you will get a definite value of alpha which is less than 1. Substitute that value of alpha okay, and get the value of V naught and that is the value of V naught for which the temperature coefficient is very nearly 0 or in practice it is going to be of the order of few parts per million per degree centigrade rising. This is the technique adopted in one of the most popular integrated circuits, voltage regulator integrated circuits which is uh, currently manufactured by Bharat Electronics here in India, of course originally manufactured by RCA. Okay? So, 3085, it is available everywhere in India. So, you can see that this particular structure is exactly, I mean just forget about this part, this we will discuss later. This portion of it, we have the zener, okay? we have the transistor. Okay, maybe another series diode, it will further increase the positive temperature coefficient and decrease the output voltage here. Instead of V z minus V gamma, we have V z minus 2 V gamma here. And then these resistors chosen such that okay, delta V naught by delta T is 0 and you have the other diode giving you the negative temperature coefficient and therefore, the voltage reference is obtained at 0.5 in this. So, this is part of this voltage regulator ICCA 3085, which is exactly similar in its concept, even though some minor variations like one diode being added, etcetera. Is this clear or not? Now, obviously, this Zener vo voltage is going to depend upon input voltage. Why? As input voltage changes, the current through this changes and therefore, this is going to change. So, what is the way of making it supply independent? This, okay, its temperature coefficient is near 0, but it should be made supply, supply independent. So, how do we do it? So, current source so, we are obtaining a voltage which is independent of supply, we will assume, okay? and therefore, this current is going to be independent of supply, we will assume, and therefore, I will put a current mirror onto this, so that it is going to get biased by that current which is going to be supply independent and therefore, there is no problem of supply dependence. This is the technique of deriving a Zener voltage 
which is independent of supply. So, I am putting a current mirror here. You can see this kind of uh, affair here. This is what? What is this configuration? This is Wilson current mirror. This modified because I am using PNP transistors. In order to achieve better current mirror action, I am adopting for the PNP transistors alone here the Wilson current mirror that we had discussed. So, this is the Wilson current mirror. Okay. So, it is biasing the zener here, okay. sensing the current here and biasing the zener here. You might ask a question. When I switch it on, sir, right, this zener is not on. Right? In this particular case, when the resistor is there, there is no such problem. The resistor was straight away biasing the zener. In this case, when I switch on the whole thing, this zener is not on. If this zener is not on, this current is not flowing. If this current is not flowing, this current is not going to exist. This current is not going to be there. So, zener will remain off. So, obviously, this is a circuit which cannot function unless you start the function. Okay? There is some starting trouble for this. In order to make it start properly, we shall have to have a zener. Look at this. This is the starting circuit. We have to have a zener which is connected to input. And therefore, this is the one zener that is going to bias this transistor okay, and cause this current to exist and pump this current. And this current has to now bias the new zener. Once this zener gets biased, this voltage is same as this voltage, this diode potential is 0 and it is disconnecting this starting circuit okay, from this. That is current is 0, voltage is 0. These are identical zeners available within the IC. Okay. The voltage across this is 0 and the current through this is 0. So, the moment this zener breaks down, this gets disconnected or gets isolated from this. So, you must have in any such scheme where you are trying to derive some constant from another constant, okay, which itself is dependent upon this constant, right? you have to have the starting circuit in all such schemes. Right? Otherwise, it will stay at another operating point that is 0 volts. Okay. So, this composite circuit is essential in order to cause a voltage reference to exist here. So, we have now achieved a voltage which is independent of supply as well as temperature. This remarkable feature is something that is a research topic in most of the analog IC design. How to derive voltage references which are okay, independent of temperature and supply voltage. In this technology, bipolar technology, this is the way we have done. Okay. How can it be done in uh, MOS technology? How can it be done in by MOS better? Okay. All these things are still topics of interest because this voltage reference is an important component, integral component of almost all control circuits. One such control circuit is our voltage regulator. In A to D converters, D to A converters, in all these schemes, right? we need voltage reference. And all these ICs will comprise this kind of structure for deriving the voltage reference. So, we have just now seen a technique of ma making use of the zener positive temperature coefficient along with diode negative temperature coefficient in order to derive a voltage reference whose temperature coefficient was 0. Now, another popular technique in deriving voltage references is what is called as band gap voltage reference. What is the band gap of silicon? Band gap? 1.1 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. or 1.2, right? So, it just so happens that the voltage that we are going to get 
okay, if you uh, derive it from the device viewpoint, will happen to be equal to the band gap. That we can actually now understand from circuit viewpoint. Let us see. We have the diode voltage which is temperature dependent and has a negative temperature coefficient. Do we have any other voltage which has positive temperature coefficient? We have one such voltage. If we just look at this, VBE1 minus VBE2, two transistors or two diodes, okay, forward biased, the difference in voltage is going to be how much? What is it? VBE1 minus VBE2 is always equal to VT log. Do you remember this? IE1 by IE2. If IE1 and IE2 are constant currents, okay, even if they are not constant, it does not matter because even if they are dependent on, dependent on temperature to a certain extent, since it is logarithmic, the main temperature coefficient is coming about from Vt, which is Kt over Q. There is Vt is nothing but Kt over Q and the temperature coefficient of this is going to be a fantastic number because it is K over Q into log of I e 1 by I e 2, which can be made as accurate as you please. Right? So, you can therefore use this as a positive temperature coefficient voltage. Okay? That means, a difference in voltage of two forward biased transistors or diodes can be therefore used as a voltage which has a positive temperature. If this can be added to the diode voltage, then obviously with suitable uh, factor coming into picture, if I can have a control over the factor, I can again achieve zero temperature coefficient for the voltage. This is the basis of band gap voltage reference. Okay? Let us see how it can be done using uh, the basic circuit concept. This is one technique by which we can achieve this. See, I am having transistor T1 operated at, let us say, current IE1, okay, using the resistance R1, let us say, and the other transistor operated at another current IE2. So, what happens here is that the voltage across the resistance Re is now VBE1 minus VBE2, which is nothing but Vt log IE1 by IE2. Okay. So, I am able to obtain a voltage across Re, which is V T log I E 1 by I E 2. This is I E 2. This is I E 1. So, what will be the voltage across this trans, uh, resistance? This uh, voltage divided by R E is the current through this. Okay. That into R 2 is the voltage across this. So, I have now obtained a controllable voltage which is dependent upon V t. By controlling R 2 by R e, I can control the extent of voltage I desire, which has positive temperature coefficient. Now, I have to add this voltage to what? This voltage must be added to a diode drop. Adding means putting it in 
series. So I have added to a diode drop this voltage and this voltage is the one which I am going to use as V reference. So that means this plus V diode is nothing but V naught. So we have V diode plus the drop across R2 which is R2 by Re into Vt log Ie1 by Ie2 coming here as my output voltage. See how simply this structure has been obtained in order to obtain the voltage addition simply introducing them in series, okay. Voltage V diode in series with a Vt dependent voltage. Now, what do I do? I have to make delta V naught by delta T become equal to 0. That means delta V diode by delta T plus, okay, what is it? This is kT over Q. That means k by Q, we, uh, we do not want to remember. We can remember it as Vt divided by T, right? It is nothing but Vt by T, okay, divided by Re log Ie1 by Ie2. Is it clear? Okay, that should be that into R2 by, okay, R. So, this should be equal to 0. So, you can find out R2 over Re required to make this condition get satisfied. You already know delta Vd by delta T, okay, as equal to minus 2.5 millivolts per degree centigrade, right? right? So, this is minus 2.5 millivolts. So, you can now find out R2 over Re, okay. Vt at room temperature, uh, let us say 300 degree Kelvin, you know, it is about 26 millivolts or 25 millivolts. So, you can substitute all these values and obtain the value of R2 over Re, okay. And Ie1 by Ie2, let us see what it is. This is the unknown. What is Ie1? It is nothing but V naught minus V B E 1 by R 1, correct? V naught minus V B E 1 and the other one is I E 2 is V naught minus let us say we call this T 3. V B E 3 by R 2. So, essentially I E 1 by I E 2 will be roughly equal to what? R 2 by R 1. So, if you know R 2 over R 1 also, okay, you can find out, I mean you can fix it as a certain value and then find out the value of R2 over Re that is required to make delta V naught by delta T go to 0. Please uh, do this for uh, particular IC. You please take the IC which is available. This IC uh, internal circuitry is available. I would like you to go through the manuals and see this internal circuitry, it is a voltage reference IC, okay, of 1.2 volts. So, identify these various components and for those components find out the what? Value of reference voltage at which this condition gets satisfied. That happens when this voltage becomes equal to very nearly equal to this voltage. It is equal to 2 Vd or 2 V gamma, okay. It is about 1.2 volts. Okay. So, please do this as a homework problem again. Substitute the value of R2, R1, etcetera available in that IC and see for yourself whether it is 
satisfying the condition for zero temperature coefficient for P naught. So, this is one way of obtaining the band gap reference. Remember, it is always done by adding suitably V t dependent voltage and V gamma dependent voltage. There are various ways of doing it. Using an op amp also you can do it. Okay? So, there are variety of such circuits wherein different schemes of addition of this V t dependent voltage with V diode is done and you come up with band gap references of different types. So, those uh, problems you must uh, encounter as and when you see a specific IC okay, and identify how this addition has been achieved.